Practice underway for New Mexico State baseball. The Aggies almost one week into practice and almost two weeks away from their season opener against the Towson Tigers on February 16th. Adam Young with the head coach, Brian Green, who enters his fourth season at New Mexico State. Well, how's practice been so far, BG? Hey, why? It's great. I mean, uh, the energy's great. The competitive level is great. Um, the guys are getting after it, you know, and it's, it's early, but uh, we've got a lot of bottled up energy dating back to last spring. You know, we want to take that next step as a program. So five practices in, uh, they've been as good as a practice five day set that I've been a part of as a head coach here. The leadership is a big part of that. The work ethic has always been good, but uh, we're off to a really good start in terms of spring practice. You told me a lot in the fall, you really liked your depth. Yeah. Is that still the case? It is, and, and I think that's why you're getting the quality that we're getting in practice right now. Uh, you know, we're too deep in terms of guys truly knowing that if one guy slips up or their game goes sideways, somebody else is right behind them or next to them to get in there. The depth has really helped the competitiveness, and uh, because of that, practice has been good, execution's been good, and the energy's been good. So this is the deepest team that we've had in our four years, and you hope that you continue mm -hmm. to do that, you know, as you build in recruiting. But um, we like our depth. We've got more arms that, that can come in and compete. And, and again, like I said, positionally, we've, we're about two, two at each spot. You graduated a lot of position players. How does that change what you're going to do offensively this year? You know, we're, we're still so fortunate that we have experience. You know, Trey takes a year off, but he's able mm -hmm. to come back. Uh, Caleb Henderson, who's the Arizona Juco player of the year, comes in. He was a draft at a junior college, so he gets injured last year, but now he's back, and, and he's experienced. And mm -hmm. couple that with 16 home runs and hitting over 300 with Carranza and a preseason All-American and Fishback and Joey Ortiz, who has one of the best freshman campaigns and that I've seen in a mm -hmm. long time when you get close to a one-to-one -one ratio strike out to walk. So even though we lose Sakurai, Hetzel, Botello, Hatch, you know, you lose some real key ingredients there. Uh, we're still experienced again, so we're really excited, and, and we get to play the same because we're going to have some strength and some home runs again, which is, uh, we like those. <laughs> hey, you bring up the Stein and Henderson injuries. Yeah. It's almost like you had two monster recruits sitting out that yeah. are back for this year. Well, it is, and, and it's that, especially that leadership component, you know, why would with those guys, you know, real players, real talented players, bring us some real leadership on the corners and in the infield, but yeah, you basically took two players, removed them from your team, which we dearly missed them last year, but now here they are, and we've got four guys in the middle of the lineup who have got experience. They're older, they're mature, and then they're strong. So uh, we're excited to have them here, and those guys, both of those guys in particular on the leadership council, have just done a tremendous job. Two years ago, Daniel Johnson gets drafted fifth round. Kind of came out of nowhere, though. Yeah. Last year, Marcel Renteria had some hype. He goes in the sixth round. There's a lot of hype this year for Kyle Bradish. He's one of the top pitching prospects in the country. How has he handled that so far? Well, he's handled it great, you know, and you never know. Those things, junior year, senior year, whenever that's going to come. And, and KB, you know, we talk about him specifically in the sense, AY, that it doesn't just happen overnight. It's a process. It's a process. And for KB, that process has been coming for two years. Uh, his maturity, his leadership, his mental growth, what he's doing in that locker room, uh, I didn't see that coming. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why he really made the jump that he made over the summer. But uh, he's handling it well. You know, people are all over him. He's a top 100 prospect in every publication. Every professional scout seems to want to talk to mm -hmm. him. He looks the part. Uh, the velocity is the part. The out stuff's the part. Uh, we're excited to give him the balls on Friday night, and uh, I couldn't be more excited to do that. He's earned it, though, mm -hmm. you know, and he's really, really matured, and that's on him, and I couldn't be more proud of what he's done. Finally, BG, eight pros the last two years. You've also been one game short of a WAC title in the regular season the last two years. Is that the next step for your program? Absolutely, 100%. You know, we're excited about what we've done. I think any time a coach has an offseason when you're that close to winning a championship, back-to-back -back years, and you don't do it after, you know, there's three championships in the history of, of Aggie baseball, so we've been close twice. Don't lose sight of what's gotten us to that point, but evaluate what you need to do to take that next step. Culture, the family program, the, char the characteristics of Aggie Up and how we practice and perform, those work but how can we get better? The competitive toughness, the accountability, the responsibility, and without question, the leadership, those are gonna be the keys for us, and that's what we're pounding. But the next step for our program is to go get a championship, and that's all we talk about. BG, good luck this year, looking forward to it. Thanks, AY. That's Aggie Baseball Head Coach, Brian Green.